Exquisita Radio Oídos nuevos Para propuestas nuevas Bienvenidos a Salir del Desierto. Este episodio es una entrevista que ha sido grabada en inglés. Si prefieres una versión subtitulada, la puedes buscar en YouTube. Si no tienes problema, la puedes escuchar en cualquier plataforma de podcast. La liga está en la descripción del episodio. I love being part of human species. I think about what we are capable of creating. Imagine Imagine the world a thousand, two thousand, or ten thousand years ago, and what we have achieved in, in recent decades. Curiosity had led us to ask ourselves such questions of the nature as what is matter, how can we explain what we observe, how can we reproduce it, why do events occur the way they do, are we alone in the universe, are there beings beyond our perception, If curiosity has led us to ask ourselves this, creativity has led us to try to answer them in one way or another, within certain frameworks. Technology is a fascinating thing which allows us to talk in real time with people anywhere in the world, to observe and measure scales very small or very large, which has allowed us to increase our life expectancy and has the ability to solve great challenges in areas of health, food production, ecology, among many others. <clears throat> I love being human also because of art in its different expressions, shapes, colors, flavors, and tenors. Art makes me enjoy the moment. It makes me feel myself with emotions contemplate myself and others in, in the context, in the moment. These kinds of things bring me hope and a very satisfying feeling of belonging. But unfortunately, there, there are also other things that bring me hopelessness, makes me feel pessimistic, like thinking about human suffering due to causes such as selfishness or pride, in all its expressions, suffering from preventable diseases, injustice to minorities, violence, racism, abuse of power, and most recently, wars. Some argue that the human being evolved over tens or hundreds of thousands of years in a context of conquer or be conquered, surrounded by violence and prone to war and desire of power. This human drive that we have cannot be taken away in a few years of, quote, miraculous peace, as Noah Yuval Harari calls it, that we have without militarized colonization movements that started in 1945 and ended in 2022. It takes more than that for our species to evolve. The recent war in Ukraine led me to reflect deeply to think very deeply on and uh, put my own life into perspective. And I want to invite you to do the same. I wonder about what we're doing right or wrong in society so that people like Vladimir Putin come to have so much power that they subject the geographically largest country on the planet to ignorance and use it for their own territorial whims. What can we do as the one world we are, so that this does not happen again. How should we educate? What institutions should we create? How should we raise our voice in the face of injustice? 
the unjustified invasion of Ukraine makes me think deeply in that today more than ever that the world is just one. Day by day, the world becomes more and more connected, and now there are no borders in terms of communication, economy, ecology, technology, and many other things, but also in terms of diseases or, or war, especially nuclear war. This had never happened before. We're living in extremely interesting times, and we must live up to them. And it is precisely because there are no borders that there are ways to help people who are literally on the other side of the planet. For example, we must raise our voices <clears throat> so that this war ends now. Demand our governments take a more determined stance that they negotiate support agreements for refugees, for example. In addition, we can make personal donations to verified refugee support institutions that can even use social networks to generate empathy and not competition or division. For me, it is difficult to empathize or even imagine the situation in which people or families that I do not know live. Here we will talk to Pablo, a friend of mine who is currently living in Kiev with his family. I will put in the episode, some verified links that I've been provided by Pablo and some that I have researched. Uh, so if you want to support in different ways, you can, you can do them through the, through the links that are going to be put below. And now there is my conversation with Pablo. Uh, thank you, Pablo, for being here, for agreeing to meet with me. I understand that these are unusual circumstances and that you are uh, uh, being brave at meeting with me and talking about these topics that are so hard for some. Uh, so uh, just to let everyone know, I met Pablo in, in the reproductive medicine industry where we both working. Uh, we're collaborating in research projects or we, we were until the the war uh, broke up. So Pablo is uh, a virologist, a geneticist, and a senior embryologist at a clinic in Kiev, in Ukraine. He's obviously, or the clinic is obviously closed at the moment. Uh, he's pretty well known in the industry because he has done uh, impressive research. He has implemented top technologies into the clinic. A uh, very smart guy uh, uh, who is just, I guess, uh, uh, living similar lives as many of us, or he was living a similar life just as many of us are right now. And I thought that it's pretty interesting to talk to him to make to make us empathize and and help to the best way that we can literally at the other side of the world. So Pablo, thank you for agreeing to, to do this interview. Yeah, thank you for offering this opportunity to speak and uh, hello to everyone, I guess. So Pablo, uh, tell us something about yourself. Who are you on, what's, what has been your war experience so far? Well, uh, you, you've said like the whole my biography, I guess. So not, not, nothing more to add. <laughs> I'm Paolo. I'm from Ukraine, uh, 34 years old. Uh, I used to be an embryologist. Uh, now I'm jobless for more than three weeks because uh, all the clinics are closed in Ukraine. And I'm still in Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. And we are under uh, shelling and bombing. And, well, uh, you said that it's bravery. I don't think that's bravery. I just, well, uh, this is my city. I was born here, so I should stay here as long as I can be helpful, I guess, for, for, for my people, for my family. 
So you decided to stay. You had a chance to leave Ukraine, but you decided to no, stay. I, I had I had a chance to leave before the war started, but uh, well, after after this war started, uh, because of martial law, because mm -hmm. I'm male and have uh, well one uh, certain type of genitalia. Uh, mm -hmm. I should stay here, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I, I shouldn't leave Ukraine until the the war, uh, the, this war will end. Uh, but on the other hand, I try to record myself to this local uh, protective uh, people uh, we have here, uh, and they are well. They they have enough people. So without any military skills, which I obviously don't have, uh, I'm completely useless for them. So they uh, haven't taken me. And so I need to stay here and just survive uh, doing like nothing. <laughs> like uh, trying, uh, trying to, well, keep, my, keep myself in mind, I guess. Is uh, your family or are you living with your family or they were able to flee? No, no, my family is still here. Uh, mm. I, I'm trying to convince them to, to leave somewhere, uh, somewhere places that are safer. But the problem here, uh, the trick here is that the, the, the traveling, the road could be much more dangerous than staying in Kiev because Kiev is, well, for now, it's well protected. It's a fortress, actually. It's a huge city. Well, not so huge as Mexico City, of course, but it's a relatively huge city. Uh, and it's well defended. We have uh, a lot of military forces, our military forces who protect us. We have mm -hmm. uh, them out of the city, in the city. So they protect us and we believe in them. And, well, we can say that they do the great job because uh, I can speak with you. I have an electricity, I have water supply, I have all, all the supermarkets uh, around me are working. So I have food supply and I have, of course, internet. Mm -hmm. So there are many people who stay here and they do their work for good. And well, I'm grateful them for, 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 for the work they do. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, well, relatively, of course, relatively, it's kind of a safe, it's safest place uh, in Ukraine for now, I guess. Yes. It's, well, the, the, the best protected place, probably. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've seen in the news that sometimes, I mean, they've, I, I believe that they have tried to make like safe passages, but they have not been very successful to the best of my knowledge and probably yeah, I would be very uh, uncomfortable to send someone away from you, right? So um, are you living uh, in, your, in your house right now? Yeah, yeah, it's my apartment. Okay, awesome. But, but you... when, uh, when, when we have like uh, an air alert, uh, which is which can be quite serious. So if we know that the uh, Russian forces are somewhere nearby, uh, so we're going to go to a shelter mm -hmm. and uh, try to be safe in, in shelter because we have the shelter. It's uh, the next home, the next house to our. And. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so, but but for now, uh, we have this uh, two walls rule that there should be at least two walls between you and uh, Miso. Uh, so we try to keep this rule and that's mm -hmm. how we live for now. Okay. Okay, so uh, I watched the Netflix recent uh, documentary about the Ukrainian revolution. I guess you did too, right? 
Yeah, we were we were discussing that uh, uh, offline, but um, I guess my question is how accurate is it? Uh, what can you say about the Ukrainian revolution that just happened a few years ago, 2013 and 14, I guess? Yeah, if I recall correctly, uh, if you can like say uh, something brief about what was the main revolution about, how you personally lived it. Well, uh, we we have the the national idea here in Ukraine. Uh, you can call it well. You can say that our national idea is on the one word. And this word is freedom. So the the whole history of Ukraine and Ukrainians as nation, uh, we want only one thing, it's freedom. And uh, unfortunately, the most part of our history, we were occupied by different countries. So, uh, and that's why we had a lot of revolutions here, actually. It's not only one. We had, uh, after the uh, Soviet Union uh, fall, uh, or before it, we had, we had one uh, revolution of, on, on, on the granite, how to say, on, on rocks. Yeah, just Google it. <laughs> okay. And then we had... Uh, um, uh, Orange Revolution in 2004, and why I was an active particip participant of that revolution. Uh, and uh, the next one was on 2013 and 14. Yeah, you're right, it was a revolution of dignity or dignity revolution. Uh, the main thing that uh, well, it started many years ago, not, not even like. 30 years ago that was like 300 years ago we always tried to be well to return to to our uh, real place to be the part of western europe because if you look at ukrainian history it was always in europe and it, it was always involved in all uh, inner european processes always but after uh, the creation of Russian Empire uh, in uh, probably it was uh, 18th century, and the funny fact here is that the Russian Empire, this is the whole name of this, was created by Ukrainian because he believed that it will be better for Ukraine and he, the people who lived here. But, well, it turned that he was wrong. And after that, they tried to occupy us, destroy us, to, to, make, the, to, to make us vanished from, from, from this territory, to destroy our culture, language, uh, our, uh, well, our nation. So that's mm -hmm. uh, that started like many many years ago, and after uh, the Russian Empire uh, fall, we had a very very short period of time of Ukrainian independence at the beginning of the twentieth century. And then we were occupied by USSR for more than 70 years. So we tried to destroy the Soviet Union from the, from, from the inside for all these years. We have these protests, we have these um, flows of people who tried to, well, to make, to weak the Soviet Union and so on. And we succeeded after all, Soviet mm -hmm. Union fall. And, uh, and after that, we had a huge impact of Russia over, like, over our country. And uh, they tried to turn us back to Russia again. And we tried to go back to Europe as we, so Europe is our place. So that's where we're supposed to be. Uh, like, well, that's our history. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
in 2004, it was an obvious choice between Russia and Europe, and we choose Europe again. Uh, but then they had their, uh, I don't know, retaliation, you should say, uh, tried to, well, they, they put the, the, through the bureaucracy, through the corruption, they, they put their pro-Russian people in our government. Uh, our prime minister, he was a, a very pro-Russian uh, guy who became our president. And uh, in 2013, there was again the same choice between Europe and uh, Russia. And people uh, choose Europe again. Uh, yeah, uh, but well, that president, he told us, well, he told the Ukrainians that we are going to be the part of European Union uh, to sign the association with the European Union or connections with the European Union, etc. Uh, mm -hmm. And, well, on one day he said, you know, uh, forget this, we're going back to Russia. And that's how this revolution started, actually. And mm. It was a protest against his decision to turn to Russia. And it all escalated into the, the, the real revolution. And mm. this president, he escaped. He stopped to manage his uh, presidential work, actually. Uh, so, but the parliament was still here, and the parliament decided to uh, release him from his duties to, well, fire him as a president. Yeah. And yeah. we had another elections here, and there were they were democ democ democratic, normal elections, mm -hmm. and then Russia started war against Ukraine. It was in 2014. They occupied our territory, our peninsula, Crimea. They occupied two of our cities, Luhansk and uh, Donetsk. And they started a real war against Ukraine. And we, uh, we asked the whole world to help us to resist against Russia. But the support was quite weak at the time. And that's why we have this war now because they understood that no one will protect us they that has that they have power to destroy ukraine completely for now to make extinct of ukraine uh, and so they they did it they did it now because but uh, ho well luckily now the reaction of world is very supportive I, I i i should say because i feel this support from everywhere and it's very surprising and uh you know i i've never thought that there will be so many people who will support ukraine and ukrainians and personally me and i'm grateful for this uh it's uh, Thompson, you know, it's it's something unique, the unique feeling, I, I should say. It it never happened before, but now it, it it's happening now, and we need to stop Russia from killing and destroying Ukraine, because you know while I I was preparing this um, mm -hmm. uh, well, our meeting, yeah, our yeah. meeting. Uh, uh, for me, it was, uh, I, I realized that I have a very clear uh, analogy for what's happening here, actually. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, if people uh, who are listening to us now, uh, if, they, if these people are not very deep in politics or history, so I can explain it very easily to them because it's mm -hmm. so clear analogy between our countries, between Mexico or Mexico, how, how, to, how, how to pronounce it uh, right, in the right in, way. In Spanish, we say Mexico. Mexico, okay, so mm -hmm. let it be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, between Mexico and Ukraine. So 
if you want to understand what's happening now here in Ukraine, between Russia and Ukraine, so it's very clear, it's very easy. So imagine that Spain, the country Spain, European country Spain, it possesses nuclear weapon, right? And Spain starts the extermination war in Mexico in order to protect Spanish talking people of Mexico. So Spain wants to protect Spanish talking people in Mexico by killing those people at the first place. So that's actually what's going on here in Ukraine. More than that, they say that there is no such people as native Mexicans at all. It's only Spaniards who has forgotten mm-hmm. their roots. Mm-hmm. So that's what's happening here in Ukraine, you see? So Russian people, they said that there is no such nation as Ukrainians, mm-hmm. no our culture, our history. And they want to protect Russian talking people here by destroying those cities who are closer to border to Russia, which are historically, they speak, well, there are a lot of people uh, who speak uh, uh, Russian, uh, obviously, because it's a legacy of Soviet Union. And mm-hmm. they have destroyed those cities. We have, they have erased for now several cities of Ukraine completely. There is no such city as Volnavaha for now. They have destroyed the part of Kharkiv they have destroyed the part of Chernihiv. So, uh, and many other small cities. So that's what they are doing now here. And this is so surrealistic and absurdic, but that's what's really happening now here. So, and if you can imagine this picture of Spain destroyed Mexico, Mm -hmm. that's actually what's going on here in real world. Russia tries to destroy Ukraine because, well, we speak Ukrainian, we have our Mm -hmm. own culture, we have our own history, we have our own language. And uh, they said that, well, we just have forgotten our history and all uh, we're all Russians. And, but you know, the truth is that in reality, it's, it's, it's absolutely opposite. Because the mm-hmm. uh, history of Russian, of Russian Empire, Russian Federation, and all these things, it it started here in Kiev. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it all started here. We have history and they don't. So mm-hmm. they want to uh, expropriate everything we have, all our history, all our uh, great minds. So if you go to Wikipedia, for example, mm-hmm. and try to compare uh, great scientists, for example, with Ukrainian roots, and you open the, the uh, page in Russian, you'll see mm-hmm. that this is a great Russian scientists, but mm-hmm. it's Ukrainian scientists in Rio. Mm-hmm. They just expropriate everything good we had, or uh, we could have, or, uh, well, all our true history, actually. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's uh, what's going on here. I think it's a, it's a fantastic analogy that you just made. Uh, because, yeah, Mexico was conquered. Well, it was absolutely conquered at the time by the by the Spaniards but uh, I mean I am a mixture of what uh, indigenous people was once in Mexico and in Spanish right now right but yes it is it is absolutely uh, how to say I can find the words it's, it's like ridiculous yeah, yeah What's it's it's, and, it's and absurd it's absurd it's, it's absurd, absolutely yeah pointless war it has no reason actually this war has no reasons at all well Mm -hmm. they started this war in 2014 and we were screaming for the world that this should be stopped 
our yes. our territory should be freed from from Russian forces because they have occupied our territory of the sovereign state. So Ukraine is a sovereign state. We have our territory, which is recognized by all the law, international laws. And they came here and put their forces here, put their government here, put their people here, actually. So they've... Uh, They've took our people, Ukrainian. They they've made them to live, uh, and anywhere. So some of them le- left in Ukraine, some of them left abroad. So these territories were repopulated by Russian people, and they said, you know, we want to protect them because it's our territory, it's our people. We we should protect them. It's uh, it's uh, it shouldn't happen in the twenty first century, you know. It, it, it's a trauma mm-hmm. of uh, 20th century. It should stay there. It should stay in the past. No, not mm-hmm. now, not here, because it's, uh, it shouldn't be like this. But it happens. It happens with Russia. They, they, they think that they uh, have right to do this. And now they're condemned. They're, well, dead. <laughs> For now, their most, that's, that's a record, you know, their yeah. most sanctioned country in the world, in the whole human history. They have like more than 6,000 sanctions over the country. It's, mm-hmm. it's an absolute record. And I'm not, I'm, I, I don't know if they're proud about it, but it's, it is how it is. It, it's a fact. They mm-hmm. occupied the sovereign state, and uh, at that time, in 2014, the reaction of the whole planet was very weak. Uh, yes, was, yeah. If they reacted that day in a different way, there never this war would never happen. This war, uh, for now, where I'm sitting right now, it would never happen if the reaction was uh, stronger back in 2014. Yeah, well, while I was looking at this documentary, I was asking myself like, okay, 2014, I was I was not a child. I mean, it was just about a few years ago. Where, where was I? Why, why didn't I remember this? I, I just kind of, uh, remember some of the names that it's just watching the news, but nothing, nothing relevant, I guess, or, or, or not that I remember. I mean, the news or the, the as you said, the, the international uh, response was so weak that we didn't even uh, realize what was happening and what the repressions were that were so violent and so on mm, and it's uh i guess it's not that different i mean it's it's a greater response now but it's not i guess as, as it should be i mean in mexico like just like uh, i think it was last week we had this i, it, I i'm so ashamed of telling you this but uh, we had like a massive fight because of football so there is this team that has uh, 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 a lot of uh how to say uh, uh they are very competitive against another team and the second team just won the, the, the cup and they just faced each other again and what happened is it's like animalistic thing i, I i'm just thinking what's going on in the minds of these people that are just fighting for football. I mean, it's, it just pissed me off so, so hard that uh, I guess that was the moment when I decided to talk to you, Pablo, to try to make some people more conscious on, on what's going on and that, that, that really we should not be doing that kind of stupid things about fighting about a football team it's so it's so stupid uh that, that yeah. yeah i just i just feel so angry about what just happened last week in mexico so i guess it's a stronger 
response, but not as strong as I would like to. Mexican government response has also been so weak. And I believe yeah. that Mexican people should be asking and demanding the government to do something more important for this. Yeah, well, uh, for now, uh, they, they don't call this like this. Well, well, uh, uh, for your football fight first, right? Uh, you, you'll change nothing, unfortunately. Uh, I will disappoint you in, in this position because, well, you cannot change human nature. It's mm -hmm. obvious. It, 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 it always was like this it mm -hmm. is like this and it will be like this because of human nature that was one of the, your last questions but that's true as a biologist i can see that uh, without changing the, the human nature you will not change the human history because mm -hmm. we are repeating it we repeat this human history uh, like maniacs you know because mm -hmm. we had a great war in the uh, uh, 18th century, uh, not 19th century, we had uh, two great wars in the uh, 20th century. And now, uh, at the second part, what I wanted to say, we have a great war in the beginning of the 21st century. And uh, not many people say this in loud. They, they don't want to pronounce it. But for now, this is the beginning of the World War III, and it's not a joke anymore. So it, uh, it you, you cannot hide from atomic bomb in, in Mexico or in Mexico. Anywhere. You, you, can, you, can, you, you cannot hide from uh, toxic winds in Mexico. You see, because if this will blow, it will affect everyone on this planet. Because for now, it is the World War III because the whole world is united against Russia. Because, but only with sanctions. Some of uh, countries give us a uh, weapon. That's good. Think we can withstand with this weapon. Uh, some of them give us uh, supply, uh, mm -hmm. money, so we can withstand this attack because Russia is much bigger than Ukraine. Just look at your globe. It has much more people in and it has much more resources. But we are withstanding for three weeks and we are, as you can see, doing good in this. And this is because of the support of the whole planet who supports us against Russia. So everyone involved even now against this uh, crazy dictator after the Hitler, I guess. Uh, so, but for now, it's like a quasi stable uh, or quasi stability for now. And we have this situation now that uh, we're fighting and other countries help us, but they're not involved in uh, fighting itself. They're not uh, give us uh, their soldiers to fight mm -hmm. back and some of them mm -hmm. they don't want even to give us a uh, weapon but you know russia has crossed all the borders uh, I, I mean everything all, all the this is cliche that i don't like all the red lines okay mm -hmm. uh, they 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 are uh, threatening us by destroying our cities and civilians so they want us to uh, uh, to lose this war uh, to uh, give up they want us to give up uh, by killing our civilians so they cannot uh, destroy our army they cannot win in a fair battle so they're terrifying us by destroying our civilians our civilian infrastructure they shelled or bombed maternity hospital how low is it how, how how can you imagine the war against someone and you're bombing the maternity hospital they're bombing our just regular hospitals they're bombing our uh, schools kindergartens 
they started to shoot from a tank to a nuclear power plant, the most powerful nuclear power plant in Europe. It has six reactors and they started to shoot from the tank in this power plant. Isn't this a red line to the whole society, to the whole globe, to understand that, that something should be done with this country? It's not right. Something is really not right in the in the root of this country of Russia because they're crossing all the lines. And now we have this thread. Uh, I've just read it on news. I don't know how 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 serious it is, but uh, I, I've read that they they're planning to make a chemical attack or biological attack or to and destroy or to make a, some sort of a nuclear attack on our country. And aren't these red lines to show people, well, what is the role of United Nations in here? Please show me. They, they're just repeating the, 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 the destiny of League of Nations, actually. They, they just talk and do nothing because, well, if this war... It should be going like 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 a war with a war law because during the war you have some laws, you have some red lines that you shouldn't cross. But exactly. Russia in this war, they crossed everything, just yeah. everything they could. And now they have well, you know, in Kiev and in Kharkiv, mm-hmm. two main cities. Well to biggest cities, they're not main, because uh, I believe that in Ukraine, all even the smallest cities, city is the main city or village, or because uh, we're whole here, we're mm-hmm. united, we're the whole nation, and ev- ev- everyone has its weight. But Kiev and Kharkiv are the biggest cities in Ukraine, and mm-hmm. both these cities, we have here uh, reactors, in in the middle of our cities because well they're for investigations you know not for the electricity but for for science this they're scientific reactors but Mm -hmm. still they are reactors with a core with the active core with uh, radioactivity in them and they're not so protected as a nuclear power plants we have four nuclear power plants in ukraine Mm-hmm. And they're threatening, I mean, Russia threatening us uh, that they will destroy or uh, damage these nuclear objects in Ukraine. Isn't this a red line for the, yes. for the world, for the community? Just look at those crazy pe- maniacs. They, they, they're not even people. I, I don't know how to call them. Because, you mm-hmm. know, when you have, well, we have the city Mariupol. Mm-hmm. Uh, and well first of all it's com- it's almost completely destroyed and mm-hmm. it's uh, it's blocked for now mm-hmm. it's sieged you know it's under the siege uh, and uh, it's a hum- humanitarian catastrophe in that city we have resources to help civilian peoples to see, to help civilian people we have all the convoys we have the food water uh, things of the first need uh, but they don't let our humanitarian convoys to go into the city and to rescue those people so mm-hmm. it's just you know the 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 whole city is a hostage of russia and they say us look how we're destroying it and you can do nothing. We just will destroy it until you give up. So that's mm-hmm. the war they're doing against us. It's it's against all the rules. You see, it's it shouldn't be like this. But that's what they do here. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so in, in a history perspective, it's uh, it's not a Russia. It's a terror rush because it's uh, it's uh, the whole country uh, behave itself like like a terrorist. That's what what I can say about this country. The the country terrorists. That's mm-hmm. that's all. Because that's not a war. It's a killing uh, 
It's a threatening, terrifying, and uh, covers themselves with uh, hostages, with the civilian people, destroying civilian infrastructure, and threatening the whole world with a nuclear disaster here in Ukraine because we're basically in the middle of Europe and the explosion on any of the reactors we have here will cover everyone, will affect everyone in Europe mm. and in Russia, but they don't care, I guess. It seems like they don't, because, you know, they, they've... Yes, sorry, I've been so talkative. But, oh, that's, yeah. that's okay. It's, it, it was accumulated, you know, <laughs> during these days. Yes. Uh, they sent to us young soldiers. Well, I'm 34 years old, and the soldiers on this war from that side, they're 18 years old, 19 years old. So basically uh, almost kids. And they mm -hmm. send without any war experience, they send mm -hmm. them to us and we kill them because they're invaders and we should kill them. That's the right thing to do to protect our country. But they keep sending these kids to our country and they don't care. You know, they, they, they bury their people, they, they left their bodies here and they don't want to get it back. That's how they do this war. So I don't know. They, well, I guess if we'll have the nuclear catastrophe here in Ukraine, Russia will just don't care. And they say, well, we don't care. Rad radiation probably, well, that's for good. You know, it's like their own people, but they don't care. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> okay. And um, you, you don't worry about being talkative if you need to say anything i mean that's why we're here so you you have said so many important things and i would like to rescue some of them uh first of all you said that you have survived this long three weeks now or a bit longer i think uh because of the aid of many people but i strongly believe that Ukrainian people are special in the sense that uh, of your history, what the history has made of Ukrainian people, it's so uh, admirable, I think. I think that if, if this invasion were to happen in different countries, many other cultures would have given up by now. But so it, I, you, you I know, think... It, it's a, it's a right thing to protect yourself. It, it should yes. be like this. If everyone uh, is invading you, your country, you should protect mm -hmm. yourself. You should protect your country, your people, your kids, your future. Because for now, it's a matter of existence of our nation, actually. Because the, the only thing that Russia wants from this war is to destroy our nation. They don't, well, they, they, they hate our, our language because we have history and they don't. And, uh, well, th that's what they do. And uh, do, do you have any other options should, to give up? It will mean the uh, extinction of your nation of your or extinction of your future. You will no longer have uh, your own language. Uh, you, you will no longer have your own history. You will not be able to teach your kids uh, with your language mm -hmm. and to say them the real history that happened, the heroic history, bitter history, good history, your own history, because we have, it's a very uh, rich history in Ukraine, and you will not be able to do this with your kids, because uh, there will be new meanings, new fake history from Russia. So we, well, yeah, we're united here, and we fight back with the whole anger, or anger we have, because actually we don't have any other choice. This war started not yesterday, not months ago, not several years ago. This war started 300 years ago. 
they tried to destroy our nation for 300 years. And we are fighting back. Sometimes uh, we succeed, sometimes not. We were occupied the most uh, part of our history. And it's, it's unbelievable, but we survived. And I believe that we will survive further. So uh, it's, it's, it's a proper thing to do. When someone is attacking you, you should fight back. And I believe that, uh, that you're not right here uh, because, well, many nations, many peoples, they, they will do the same in the same conditions, I guess. Because you, you know the example of uh, war in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. they won the small mm -hmm. country but they won because it was their territory their people yes. yes and they're fighting for all of what you just said right you're fighting for your country for your language for your family uh in difference from many russians right that they didn't even know that they were coming to a war or they, they were they were told that they were doing some exercise or something like that. I don't know. Actually, uh, I, I actually I don't know. For now, uh, I cannot comment this because I don't believe them. Uh, I know that many people in Russia support this war. It's like seventy percent of people in Russia they support this war because they're so brainwashed by propaganda and they have this blood thirst. I guess. Uh, and they believe that, well, I, I don't know their beliefs, actually. But it seems like they believe that there is some super nation of saviors for this planet, that they want to save everyone from everything except for being Russian. So, uh, but that's my point. Uh, you, you know, th this, these soldiers that are going here they have no purpose that's true what what the purpose of this war at all there is no purpose there's no point of this war it's completely pointless and uh, the their soldiers some of them at least they understand the the, the meaningless or the purposeless of this war and uh, yeah so uh, we know what we stand for and they don't they don't know why they're fighting us, why, why mm. they have this war against us. They're here like, like just like a meat, a target. So um, I have a very, I'm, I'm, I am fond of comedians. I think comedians are very smart people and I, I, I like to see and to study the, the, the comedian phenomenon and to understand why people laugh at some things, why we find some things funny and, and, and so on. I think that's, a, that's the thing that I'm interested in, in them, and that I like to observe. And when I find out that uh, Zelensky, your president, used to be a comedian, I was like, of course, that's why he's so empathic to people. That's why he, he, at least from the perspective and from the news that, I, that I've been able to read, I think he's a great leader because he's a comedian. And for a comedian, you need to have certain abilities of being able to read your people, to know what they're feeling, to know what, they, what the, uh, uh, their, their beliefs are, and from there, you have to make something to make them laugh, right? And, but right now, I think uh, uh, most or at least half of the news that I've read are about Zelensky and how he's doing a great job. What's your opinion about him? Do you agree with me? Uh, you know, uh, yeah, it's my opinion. So I'll be sincere here, right? Of course. Uh, uh, I, I think that it's a picture created for uh, the whole world and community because, well, it should be like this during these harsh times. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't voted for him. Uh, mm -hmm. And he was a quiet, well, 
moderate comedian. He, he isn't funny, actually. You should uh, watch some some his low-budget movies. They're not funny at all. They're very low-quality movies, actually. And uh, he's not a great actor. He's not a great leader either. Uh, but they're making a picture of him like this. And, well, for now, let it be like this. Uh, at least he stays here. And that gives him credits for sure he didn't ex escape like our well that president well yeah. president, president during too. the revolution of dignity uh, he stays here he fights he makes his presidential work so he talks to leaders of other countries and all the other things and i hope that he doesn't interfere with the real military guys who rule mm -hmm. this war actually again yeah. because he's not uh, he's not a military guy he mm -hmm. he is an escapist actually when we the, when the war started in 2014 he escaped from military service so but for now okay let it be let he stays here and uh, make the best he can do for now mm -hmm. act so he is now acting the the leader the president and well he's doing good so far if you say that you've seen this uh, it's a lot of propaganda uh, for him yeah yeah this so, so you, you 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 saw this news uh, and it, it makes such an impression let it be like this uh we will deal with him after we win this war uh well if everything will be good if there will be less corruption in our government less connection to russia less connection less connection to russian uh or pro-russian people okay let him stay here but we have many questions to him you know i, I voted for another president the, the former one uh Poroshenko, i mean and uh, he tried Russian. to create yes. yeah. yeah he tried to create our army here in ukraine during well uh, he he is the reason why we have uh, this army for now to withstand mm -hmm. the this mm -hmm. aggression the this this war in 2022 because mm -hmm. he started to build it in 2014 we didn't have okay. army before that, the mm -hmm. real army, because it was destroyed by pro-Russian forces during the mm -hmm. whole independent history of Ukraine. And he started to build it in 2014. And hopefully uh, it will be enough to withstand this uh, war for now. But where was Zelensky? Who knows? He was an actor. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, he he was actually he was an actor in uh, in in Moscow. He 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 visited Moscow several times, and he sold uh, his product, his comedies, to Russia mm -hmm. during this war. So well, but for now, I have no questions to him. Uh, we will see. You know, we we just uh, we are observing for now uh, how he acts how he responds to the to these uh, events and etc uh, so uh, well he's not my leader but he's my president for now and yes. we will see after this war we will have the new elections and mm -hmm. if everything will be fine he has a chance for the next term but if he'll uh, i don't know uh, loose in some things here. Uh, I mean, the, during the war, during this war, he will show Thompson uh, inappropriate. We will mm -hmm. just simply not choose him. That's all. Yes. So the people of Ukraine will not choose him, and this will be the response of his leadership during this war. So that's actually the answer to your question. The next Very election. Yeah. will be the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. We'll see, I guess, yes. So you have mentioned something uh, earlier also about 
the ignorance of Russians. You said you said that somewhere around 70% of Russians are yeah. in favor of this invasion, but they think that they are saving from a Nazi, Nazi uh, government or something, some stupidity like that. Yeah, you know, but, the, 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 this is this is just a, a small sentence here. You you can you mm -hmm. can describe everything everything you told in in one short sentence sentence. The, they want to liberate Ukraine by killing Ukrainians. That's, that's all. So that's yeah. Yeah, uh, they, they, but they believe in their highest, uh, I don't know, destiny, goal, highest goal, probably, that they need to, that they're savior of something. But their soldiers, the one that survived, they see mm -hmm. the actual picture here and they understand that they're not welcome here, that they're not saviors, that they're killers, that they're mm -hmm. rapists, that they're destroyers of our peaceful life all we wanted to be is just we wanted to be free we wanted to be the part of european union to live on our land you know we have never started war or wars against other uh, countries we always try to protect ourselves and to live peacefully on our own land that's all interesting yeah so you think that uh, international efforts to make Russians uh, or to free Russians from their ignorance, is it, an, is it useful? Do you think that, uh, I mean, I, 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 I've seen some efforts from hackers, this anonymous group from, recently you sent me a, a, a message recorded by Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, uh, directing a message to to russians and telling them what they're doing and what the implications you think these efforts might lead somewhere are they are they worth are, are, i mean are they really are russians really just ignorant or they choose to live in their ignorance what what do uh, you I, think about this i i think that they're you know, uh, I'm not sure that I know these uh, words in English, actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, I think that they are liable or uh, formless. So you, they are like a glue uh, or a clay. So you can make anything from them. Uh, when you possess uh, or uh, you, you have the television in your pocket. So if you own the television, the propaganda, you can make it for good or for bad. Everyone. Yeah. So they're so manipulate. Yeah, that's a good word, actually. It's a manipulation. So they're, they are manipulative right? So mm -hmm. you can manipulate with them easily. You can put in their hands the good messages and they will follow you and the bad messages and they will also follow you because they don't care. It looks like they actually don't care. So uh, if you own the propaganda in Russia and you will put the right messages in those liable society of Russia, you will have a better result, I guess. But uh, from our side, from for now, for 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 real time, I mean, uh, I, I don't think that world can uh, convince Russian people to stop or to change their mind. You should be you should act from the inside, like the like the Putin's uh, exactly puppets the do, you see? Yes, So, because I was thinking, because uh, I mean, all of the sanctions the world is putting on, on, on Russia, I'm just thinking, I just read this news that, uh, okay, McDonald's decided to leave Russia and then 62,000 Russians were uh, 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 jobless because of this decision, right? So I was thinking, are they really guilty? Should, should the international uh, community 
punish Russian people by just you know, being they, ignorant they, or being manipulated? They, they are. Them? They are because, well, it, it's very simple, actually. It's, it's much simpler than it, it looks like. Uh, Western companies, they shouldn't feel guilty about this because it wasn't their choice. You know, mm -hmm. you have a very powerful instrument in each free country in the world, the protests. Mm -hmm. You can protest against anything. You can gather people that uh, are sharing your thoughts and start a protest. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any protests in Russia against war in 2008 against Georgia? in 2014 against Ukraine, in 2022 mm -hmm. against Ukraine again. Mm -hmm. They're not protests. There are several people with uh, blanket uh, papers on the streets and they're, well, isolated. immediately arrested or isolated. Mm -hmm. And that's the Russian protest. As I, as I told you, they're like a clay. So they do not mm -hmm. protest. So that's their own choice to live like they live. And from, for the whole history they had, they haven't created... Any, well, uh, I believe that you've uh, read the letter that we've uh, made with other embryologists in Ukraine, right? Yes. There is a sentence there that they haven't created their own product, the competit competitive product. The, the world-class product. So the, Russia is one of the most richest country with, mm. by the resources in the whole planet, on the whole planet. Mm. They're the most richest with the resources on the whole planet. And they will not manage to create any competitive product during their history. Mm. Can you imagine this? Do they have dignity? Mm. I don't think so. Because you see, if, well, this is a globalization process on this planet, you should establish connections, not to ruin them. And that's mm -hmm. a very good thing, actually, because mm -hmm. to assemble a computer, you can have the manufacturers on the different sides of planet and to assemble them mm -hmm. on a, in a small country somewhere in the Eastern Europe, for, for example. It's a good mm -hmm. thing because everyone is involved because you have this, uh, well, all the financial flows and so on. But in Russia, in Russia they, they were not be able to, to create something that will be valuable for the, for the other world. And now when the world turned their back to them and said that here you have the sanctions, they have no own product to cover this loose, you mm. see? And yeah. that, was, that was their own choice to do this. They did not protest against this. Mm. You know, in, in, uh, to, uh, in uh, 1994, I guess, where there still was tensions after the uh, fall of the Soviet Union, they... In, in, in Moscow, uh, on some square, they've, mm -hmm. they, they gathered like more than a million people in one protest. Mm -hmm. you, you, you technically can do nothing with million people on one square. And this protest means something. When you have one million people on the square of your capital, it means something. But until then, it's, it's pointless and they do not protest. All the decisions were made by their government were accepted by this society. So yes, they are guilty for this because it was their own choice. So all the Western companies, they shouldn't feel guilty because it wasn't their choice. It was the choice of those people who did not protest against their government. And we have this now. We have war in, the, in Europe and the start of the World War III because of uh, clay people in Russia. Mm -hmm. 
Well, at least that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, which is why we're, why we're here. So thanks for that. Mm. So my next uh, uh, question would be regarding the, the, I mean, I understand that we're not politicians and, and we're not experts in this stuff, uh, but um, do you think that international involvement should be greater even in a risk of a nuclear war? Mm. I was this, I was listening yeah. to this guy. I don't know if you've heard of him. It's his name is Yuval Noah Harari. He's an Israeli. He's PhD in history. He has written some books and so on. And he proposes that this long period of peace, uh, quote unquote peace, from the Second World War until now, has been thanks to the nuclear. And, and, and the fear of nuclear war. What's you know your opinion that, on this? Yeah, yeah. You know that uh, the most bitter part of uh, history of uh, independent Ukraine, uh, we have uh, given all our nuclear weapons to Russia. Yeah, I heard that, yeah. Yeah, so that should be a lesson for the whole planet, for the whole nations, for all the nations, for all the people of this planet. Never do the same again. Never. So if you have nuclear weapon, don't give it to anyone, especially to your neighbors, because these neighbors in the nearest future will come to you with a nuclear weapon threat and will try to destroy you. So that's, uh, well, that, that was our lesson. And I hope that people will uh, notice this and understand how dangerous it could be for them to do like this or to act like this. Because, you know, again, we are a peaceful country. We wanted peace. And we believe that if we'll deal or have some agreements with other countries, Uh, huge, big, powerful countries, and we'll give them for free our all nuclear potential. It was the third in the world at that time. Ukraine had the third nuclear potential in the world at the time we have given it for free. And uh, yeah, uh, and and We, we believe that these countries, these powerful countries will protect us and we can develop in a peaceful manner here in Ukraine and to create our own country on our own rules. And one of the sites who signed this uh, agreement, the Budapest Memorandum, I, guess, I, uh -huh. I, I don't uh -huh. know how to, how to pronounce it correctly, uh, it was Russia. So they, they guaranteed that uh, the integrity of our country, uh, they guaranteed the independence and so, so on. So many points there were. Uh, and they uh, ruined everything. Uh, so uh, I don't know about nuclear weapon uh, that it's a guarantee to anything for now. You see, Uh, they threat us with uh, our own nuclear power plants, even without uh, threatening us with nuclear weapon, actually. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, the thing that the world can do for now to stop the real World War III, the hot face of this war, is just to destroy the regime in Russia. I don't know how, as you said, uh, we are not politicians, we are not mm -hmm. military guys either, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they should stop him immediately. I mean, Putin and his uh, closest people to him, they should stop this immediately because it, well, 
it, it will grow in, into something much, much worse. And yes. thus, everyone will be affected. So if the nuclear weapon is a really peacemaker, I don't know. <laughs> I don't feel like this, you know. I, I I'm not. I, I don't feel like uh, I'm protected now. Well, from an accidental shelling, because it can happen now for a, a, in, in any minute. But yeah, well, we had nuclear weapon. It didn't help us. Uh, I believe if we had missiles. Who knows? But on the other hand, well, Russia breaks all the rules, all all the signs, everything. So they don't care. So and they believe that their power in in this uh, careless. Uh, but I don't think so. I think that you should be that you should care about the, the people who are nearby uh, to your relatives and, and so on. Yeah, but uh, even we are not politicians, we should know politics. It's very useful. Well, everything is politics. Uh, the, 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 there is, a, you know, it's a, like a moniker. I don't, well, it's like a slogan, right? Like a slogan in Russia that uh, uh, science, art, sport has nothing to do with politics, but it's not mm. true. Everything is a politics. Everything. Uh, novels, uh, poems, art, science, sport, everything is uh, politics. So we are deeply inside it. When you making some uh, cool stuff in uh, programming, uh, under the guidance of your government, it is politics. Even if you do it independently, you know that you are a citizen of your country and it's a politics. So you cannot say that you're not a politician. Maybe it's not your work, but still you're deeply involved in these processes. And yeah, in Russian, they don't care. They, they're not in the politics. They, so politicians or the guys who they put above them, mm -hmm. they can do anything. Mm -hmm. And they actually do. Yeah, so they, do. they have shown that. Yeah, I was talking to a psychologist and we were arguing about this uh, human nature that needs to be put aside in terms of, of or, or repressed in terms of living in society. You know, we humans have impulses and so on that needs to be sometimes repressed in order to live as a society. I guess politics is, is something that we have to live in regardless we want or not, as you said, right? Yeah, and, and, and being able to... Yeah, you know, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. You know, this, uh, this is a, a quote that uh, if you're not interested in the politics, it doesn't mean that the politics is not interested in you, right? Exactly, yeah. Like, so. yeah, I like it. Yeah, and, 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 and even the politics are very interested that you don't care about politics, right? Yeah, sure. It's very convenient for them as we have yeah. made our point yeah. here. Which is a, a, a thing for, uh, which is happening in Mexico. Also, they they're very interested in making poor people and, and polarizing economy because that way it's easier to manipulate society. Unfortunately, I'm completely ignorant about the situation in Mexico. In Mexico, because well, mm -hmm. uh, you're on the other side of the globe, and I believe that your listeners or our listeners. Uh, 
uh, don't know much about Ukraine either, but yes, it's it's That's it's mushy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a mushy, you know. It's <laughs> it's a B-sided. Yes. Uh, uh, but I will read more. I guess if I have the opportunity, I will read more because it's interesting. Uh, I really interest. Uh, well, as a biologist, I'm mm -hmm. interested in uh, how humans uh, spread it through the globe and uh, the native Mexicans uh, and uh, Americans or Mexican Americans or native Americans in US of A. Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting for me. So, and actually uh, in Ukraine, we have, we have a game about uh, native Americans of US of A. It calls, uh, this land is my land mm. and it's about uh, fighting back the conquerors from mm. uh, europe and mm -hmm. yeah so uh, i should look for but, it i will <laughs> yeah but it's you, you know uh, my my interest in uh, people in in this planet uh, it's 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 just biological i guess <laughs> it's not like but uh, on the other yeah 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 evolutionary yeah it's it's very interesting it's very interesting yeah we should in another day perhaps when you come to to my hometown we should get together and talk about evolution and different things more uh more happy well, i have i have a, i, I I have a great theory you'll like it uh, if you like the mass uh mathematics yes uh you you will like my theory about uh, evolution of uh, human genomes it's mm -hmm. very well it, it will work in probably 200 years from now because we don't have uh, such powerful computers to calculate everything mm -hmm. that i've imagined <laughs> <laughs> about our evolution. We should talk about uh, but, that later. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. It's, it's, it's very interesting. It's very okay, interesting. Okay, so uh, we kind of diverged, which uh, I guess it was good because we were going through the dark paths of nuclear weapons. So it, it was a good diverge right now. So just to close this uh, topic, how do you see or envision the post-war I guess it depends on how the war ends, but uh, what do you think? Because I'm, I'm worried about this war being seeds to more uh, polarized world where we just judge each other for our nationalities or for uh, another things that I think that we as a world should be pointing in different direction or try to create the conscience that we're living in a single world where there are so many things that we have no longer uh, borders for calling economy, calling uh, uh, ecology, so many things that there are no borders now and that I think we, as a humankind or human being, we should envis and try to accomplish. So I am worried about what this war might, might uh, uh, set seeds into. I mean, I can imagine Russians walking along in, 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 in different parts of the world and people being aggressive to them just because they're Russians. And, but uh, avoiding the, the, the human being that it's in there, that uh, I guess it, it, it's, uh, I, I, don't, I don't really know what my question is. It's just, uh, uh, how, I guess, how do you envision the future? Do you think this war will put seeds of hate or should we, where should we go? Well, yeah. Uh... Look, uh, as for Ukrainians, I can say it for sure, uh, nothing will change to us 
because as I said previously, this war started 300 years ago. And from that time, we feel uh, uh, we, we, doesn't, we, we don't feel very um, good about uh, being neighbors of, of Russia mm -hmm. uh, and Russian people, actually. Uh, but for the other world, you know, uh, in, in terms of the great history, you should ask your friend or the, the guy you've mentioned that mm -hmm. is PhD in history. Mm -hmm. uh, probably he, he, right? It's he. Yes, it's a he. Uh, uh, he will say that I'm right or not. Well, you, you'll tell me the result. But in uh, terms of uh, huge historical uh, time frames, uh, it doesn't matter at all. So not, nothing has, uh, will be changed because, uh, well, we're, we're humans. Our nature is the same and it's exactly. relatively constant. So there is always, well, look at the history of... Uh, World War II. Do you hate Germans? I'm not. Well, because modern Germans uh, has nothing to do with Nazis, Germans, and we're, we're fine. Uh, so in uh, two, three more generations, it will be like almost the same. There is always uh, the renegades. There is always uh, some good some not so good, some moderate. Uh, globally, nothing will change. And uh, after two, three hundred years, years from now, no one will ever uh, remember this like, like we feel it right now, because for now it's our lives, but for them it will be just a small sentence in a history book or history, I don't know, uh, page on the outer net. I don't have <laughs> no idea. So, uh, yeah, for now, it will be uh, quite harsh, uh, acute, I guess. I, I can use this word here. But it will come in uh, several decades from now. So in globally, nothing will change. I hope that uh, after we win this war, it will be better for Ukraine and we finally will have a chance to finally be completely free from the impact from Russia because we deserve it. We were fighting for too long to be independent state, to, be, to have our own history, our own nation, uh, our own language. Mm -hmm. and to live the way that we want to live uh, because well they, they're doing genocide here you see mm -hmm. they just kill civilians it's not it's not even a war and we will withstand this and i hope that with the help of other nations we will prosper and we will show that we are rightful uh part of or rightful member of the European family mm -hmm. and as for the Russia well you will have them for I don't know a decade not a decade several years uh, they will I, I don't think that they will feel guilty about this like uh, German people did uh, I don't feel that they have this power to feel guilty about anything because uh, I, 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 I constantly observing what they're doing, what they're saying, how they behave. They, they, they just don't feel guilty. And it will not change for them, but I believe that, well, I hope it's, not, I, I, I don't believe, but I hope that uh, other countries other governments, probably some special services, I don't know, will be able to finally establish the democratical government in Russia. And with the same propaganda instrument, they will make this country for good. 
or at least several small countries after Russia fall. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, uh, in conclusion, uh, without changing human uh, nature itself, as I said, uh, you cannot change human history. It will be always like this, unfortunately, or fortunately. Uh, somehow, we were able to survive so long and we have like 21st century now. Uh, but as a biologist, I've seen the end of our species and we should do something right now to prevent this collapse. You see, the, the problem is we have, we all have, well, maybe uh, on that part of uh, or that side of our planet, it doesn't feel like, like in here. But here we all have this lesson after World War II. Uh, and we have the exact repeating of what happened in Nazi Germany in Russia right now. And we, we just blinked this moment when it happened. So I hope that planet, governments, people, some smart young people from the next generation, they will create the instruments to prevent such situations in future, to prevent some crazy people be the rulers of the destinies of millions of people. We need, we need this, we needed these instruments after the World War II, but still nothing has changed we still have have some crazy people who can thread the world with uh, uh, nuclear weapon that's craziness it shouldn't it, it shouldn't be like this so my hope that these instruments will be created by very smart people of the next generation so this will never happen uh, and well, actually, that's my point. Here, I can stop. <laughs> you know, full stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a great way to end an argument that you just said. I agree. I completely agree with you. Yeah, I think that we should definitely look at what we have done, and as you said, put smart people in creating this international organizations or whatever it's needed to avoid the number one because crazy people get so much power we, we, we shouldn't let them have this amount of power and number two yeah, if they see, do to take care of everyone right you see we have this uh, well before after world war first the first world war there was a league of nations it failed mm -hmm. because we had World War II, mm -hmm. the Second World War. And after the World War II, we have this United Nations. But what they really do now is just talking. Okay, they condemned Russia. Next, what next? We don't have the peacemakers here from UN exactly. in Ukraine. We don't have anything from UN. We have the condemn uh, over Russia, and that's all. They they only talk, but there is mm -hmm. no actions. And the Agreed. destiny of UN will be just the same as, as League of Nations. These institutes, institutionals, they should be ruled by really smart people who mm -hmm. will prevent or make the restrictions uh, for, for for such well, conditions that we have now. So there should be some, uh, some frames, some yeah, restrictions for, 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 for everything to just to, in order to, to keep the stability of the prosperity of, of the whole planet, as you say. But for now, we don't have nothing of that of this so for now we have a catastrophe in the Thank middle you. of europe so 
my last question, how can we help you personally <laughs> or, or Ukrainians? Uh, yeah, uh, well, support Ukraine. Uh, that's, that's all I can say for now. Uh, I'm, well, for now, me personally, I'm good. As you can see, I'm warmed, uh, in, in warm. Uh, uh, I have everything to survive and uh, I'm doing good so far. Uh, for people of Ukraine, they need support. Uh, Ukraine needs support. And we have, well, I believe that you can uh, share some links uh, with uh, this, uh, how to say, the bank accounts and etc. Yes, I will. And, yes. Spread, and, and, mm -hmm. and you know, the, well, talking about the ideology, uh, just the, the best uh, help everyone can do now is just to spread the truth, uh, the real truth, not the propaganda. If you don't believe me, just check the facts, right? So uh, every time you deal with any information, please check it before you believe in it. Because in this uh, post-truth world we are living in, uh, you can find the information to support any ideas on this planet, uh, just any. And it's fair even for scientific uh, articles. If you believe in something, you can find the supportive scientific article. Scientific. And uh, it shouldn't be like this also. Uh, so uh, be interested in uh, real Ukrainian history, in real Ukrainians, and uh, search for the truth and spread the truth. And if you don't have any possibility to help with money, resources, or just, for example, bulletproof West, right? Uh, the best you can do is uh, to be on a light side of the power, right? Of the force. <laughs> to be a Jedi and spread the truth yeah, exactly. among yeah. people. Uh, and, you know, I've prepared several links for you to share about some... Uh, Ukrainians uh, just to show that well this uh, well we, we have our own history and it's rich and it was uh, filled with uh, great people who mm -hmm. led the humanity to go in space or save the humanity from plague and that's a fact Ukrainians saved the planet from, from the cholera and plague and etc. Uh, but uh, no one knows it, right? Uh, I, I, I'll leave you some, uh, some funny... Uh, of course, it's just a Wikipedia and it's very short, very short uh, articles. Uh, it should be much wider. In, in Ukrainian, you can just compare, it's much bigger. Uh, but still, it makes some at least some impression and you will be able to understand uh, what these people did to the planet what their uh, contribution to the prosperity of this planet and i hope that the future generations of ukrainians will be even better and we will be able to to make the life on this planet better uh, and along with other nations. So yeah, just uh, support Ukraine and spread the truth. What gives you hope, Pablo? Me? Uh, yeah, well... Uh, what motivates just, you? To... Just, just, just the thing that I've... Uh, Rights said, uh, the future, the future generations. I see in in children the continuation of all these processes, and I see how talented they are, and uh, how they're involved in the materialistic world, in the real things, and how they can make a difference 
in this well uh return it back to what where we put the full stop right uh i hope that next generations at least some of them will have smart people or smart enough people to make a difference and to put us aside from a massive extinction of our species because uh, we are on the edge for now unfortunately we are on the edge of the extinction and we need these people and i hope that they will be here on this planet so mm -hmm. that's what gives me motivation to continue my work uh, i well uh, I, I'm really in uh, molecular biology, and I'm I'm this well. I'm investigating the possibility of uh, repopulation of this planet with uh, artificial methods, for example. So yeah, that gives me hope. The next generations, not our generation, unfortunately, we yeah, fucked this everything up. So, assuming that there is one, what's the meaning of life? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> as a, uh, as a just, biologist, just, just, you might have a clue, know, but uh, as a human just, being, yeah. why is there conscience in, in this planet? Why do we have conscience? Is there... Oh, no, no, uh, it's a byproduct. Is, is there like it's, just, a, it's just a byproduct of our... Uh, a neural network it's not, not nothing personal you know mm -hmm. uh, just make me the definition of the word meaning and uh, exactly. i'll probably be yeah. able to answer to your question because you know uh, we did this is another very um uh not 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 very perfect instrument the uh, uh, words the token the, the the way we uh, exchange the information it's it has a lot of weaknesses and uh, issues so uh, it's very hard to understand each other even to understand yourself by using words because the meanings are much more than just words so meaning of life well after all, on this planet, we do the same as all the other species do. We just convert one type of energy into another type of energy. And that's all. We cannot do anything more than that. So if you think about the existence of humanity on this planet, for the planet, uh, it, there is no difference between ourselves and, for example, ants. We do just mm -hmm. the same as they mm -hmm. do. We convert different types of energy into another types of energy. That's all. Mm -hmm. We accumulate some. We say that we have these dumpsters, we have these landfills, but it doesn't matter for planet either because after all, chaos will consume all of this and our star will explode and all of this Entropy has, no, yeah, has no meaning at all a very Pablo, positive thank you. conclusion <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so uh thank you thank you for talking to me thank you for thank sharing you for, your thoughts uh, and your yeah. your personal uh ideas and things that are going uh beyond uh, and that i hope that uh someone might listen and make them think about things that mm -hmm. are beyond what is probably evident you know like it's there it just yeah have hope on people like you also that trying to do good into the world and and learning from this yeah uh, i want to thank all who uh, was listening to this and stayed with us and yeah, thank you for inviting me in this uh, conversation. Uh, as you said, as you saw, I was I, I wasn't too quiet <laughs> <laughs> this time. 
but yeah, thank you for uh, uh, giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts and to ask people to spread the truth. Anything else you want to say? Uh, I hope to see you soon, someday. I go. Yes, uh, I, I hope guess, to yeah. see you uh, in Kiev once this all happened, or in here in Mexico. Both once sides. Yeah, we we can we can make both. Exquisita Radio Exquisita Radio Oídos nuevos para propuestas nuevas